The Layers and Objects menu is a feature that is regularly used by all professionals, but it is rarely used by beginners. And in today's video, I'm going to show you why. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and before we continue with today's video, I just want to give a quick personal message. To all those that reached out to me either publicly or privately about myself being ill all over last week, thank you so much. I really do appreciate all your kind words. I am feeling a hell of a lot better now, but as it turns out, it was a variant of COVID, which is why it hit me so hard. It was quite bad, but as I said, content can now continue because I am feeling much, much better. So without further ado, let's get into the topic for today, and that is the Layers and Objects menu. Now when it comes to the layers and objects menu, you're going to need it open before anything else and you can find it on the toolbar which is either going to be across the top, underneath the file bar or down the side like mine right here. You're looking for the three little dashes which you can see right here and I have mentioned this little feature in previous videos but I've never really gone over it in too much detail on why you should be using it. Alternatively you can get the same menu open by going to object and then layers and objects right here at the top. Once it opens you will have something that looks like this. Now I have already set all my layers. As you can see, I have an example layer, details, line work, shading, and base. But I will just switch to a new project just to show you what it would be like when you first open it. Now, as you can see, when I have opened it and there is nothing on the canvas, all you will get is layer one and there will be nothing else in that layer. But for me, as you can see, I've set mine so you get all these layers and these little arrows have appeared because each one of the layers has objects within it, as you can see. So first, you're going to need to know what you're actually looking at. It's all well and good having all these options in front of you, but if you don't know what they do, then they're going to be pretty much useless. In the top left corner of the layers menu, you are going to find this little page with the plus icon. This is add layer. Now when you click it, you are going to get a new layer and it will be placed above all the other layers. And this will go for all of your different layers. But obviously, as you can see with them, they will automatically change color. And if you want to color code all of your different layers, you can do so simply by going over to the bar at the right here and double click again. This will bring open this little window and allow you to change the color to whatever you want and then close out of it when you are finished. Now, when it comes to the arrows, these are going to be your layer order. So these arrows are how you can dictate where all of your shapes go. Alternatively, you can simply click and drag. And as you can see, a little green line appears. And that green line will signify where you are going to place it. You can also click and drag to put it into its own separate layer or into an already created layer. The X is exactly what you think it is. Whatever you have selected can be deleted by using this little X. This little cog, this is going to control your expansion. So whether you choose to expand with these little arrows or not. Now, of course, it's not just the layers that you can rename. It is also these paths. Again, double click and you can rename it to whatever you want. 
and this will become very obvious when you use this. This little search box will allow you to search for any in particular path. So if you've got thousands of objects and shapes, then you can name them all whatever you would like. And as long as you remember the name, you can search for it here. And finally, there are three options for every layer and every path. You can see them as soon as you highlight over one and you will see a black box, an eyeball and a padlock. The box is always going to refer to the opacity and the blend modes. So I can lower the opacity and as you can see on the canvas, everything fades. The second is visible or invisible. So if we click on this eyeball, it will make everything in that layer or that specific object disappear. It's not being deleted, it just cannot be seen. Clicking it again will allow you to see the objects again. And finally, the padlock. By clicking on this padlock, as you've probably seen me do in previous tutorials, this will lock everything within the layer or each individual path. As you can see, they all have individual padlocks. Now what this will do is will stop you from interacting with anything. So if you've got a lot of different objects and you're trying to select one in particular, these can get in the way. But if you lock all of the properties, you can then get to the items you need. These are your layers. Whatever is at the bottom will be at the bottom on your canvas. So these will be the objects at the very bottom and everything else that you place above it will go over the top. Think of it like placing a piece of colored card over a different piece of colored card. It's going to obscure the piece on the bottom, but the top will be fully visible. The layers work in exactly the same way. Now each one of these layers, if you click the arrow, will give you a list of all the paths or objects within that layer. As you can see, this is the shading layer for me. The only shading on this little smiley face that I've created is the two little points on either end of the smile. These two points are two separate gradients, as you can see. If I select one, you can see that this is a radial gradient within a radial shape. Now, as you can see, I have just separated all the different layers, details, line work, shading, and base. These are all the separate layers, but all these are, are the same smiley face that I have got right here slightly rotated and separated from each other. However, if I was to select the top layer and then just hold control as I shift it downwards and then select them all again and again move down and then all again and move down, you get the same smiley face. So why do professionals use it? But amateurs don't well that is very very simple as you can see if i was to separate all of the different objects within this smiley face into one layer which is what i've got in this example layer right here if i select them all you can see that they are all in this one area of course the text objects that i have are also in that same layer but this is a smiley face. It is not very complicated. It is a very simple shape. So as you start to get further and further, these paths will grow a lot. You will have many, many, many different paths. So being able to separate all these different paths into their categories, for example, the line work or the shading 
or even the template at the very bottom. This is how you will be able to navigate all of the different layers with ease. So there you go, my friends. That is why you should be using the Layers and Objects menu. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.